Jay Swenson said, Not to be fully aroused to the potentiality of one's senses means to walk the flat ground of appearances. Unquote. What this means is you must be present to win. Stay with us today for some thoughts on using your senses to bring the richness out of your story. The best and most interesting stories are full of rich detail. Not only is this an important technique in writing in order to take your reader where you want them to go and to help them recreate the scene in their own minds, it becomes an important part of living your own story. Being fully present and aware within your own life, being in the present, is required to take home the prize. Stories are our lives in language. Welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. I'm Lori Lee, and I'm excited for our future together of telling stories, evaluating our own stories, and lifting ourselves and others to greater places because of our control over our stories. This podcast is about empowerment and giving you, the listener, ideas to work with in making your stories work for you. Story power serves you best when you know how to use it. There is always the fine print at the bottom of the ticket that tells you that if you wander off before the drawing for the K2 skis, the facial, or the trip to Costa Rica, the loot will not fall into your hot little hands. Years ago, I had a large wooden sign. I mean big, it was like six feet long, and it read, you must be present to win. I hung it proudly on my dining room wall. There were a variety of interpretations, but my reason for having it there was to remind me that every moment that my mind was not fully attentive to the present experience, the smell of my son as he sat on my lap so I could read him a book, the tightness of my arms paddling across Tony Grove Lake in my canoe, the feel of the breeze across my skin as I sped down a mountain path on my bike. The brilliant intricacy of a flower when I look at it in detail. Every time I let those details go unnoticed, I lose. I lose the opportunity to take with me what that experience offers. I lose the opportunity to be most fully alive. I skim the waters of living instead of getting deep and real. Our senses sight, smell, touch, taste, hearing, and I add intuition. These are the filters through which we get to interpret the world. Our senses help us connect with what surrounds us. There's a great deal of brain that is dedicated to our senses. This relationship between our senses and our brains is subjective. For example, it's been proven that to some people, cilantro tastes like a delicious herb, and to others it has a soapy flavor. The receptors in our taste buds work differently for different people. And though it's only been in the last 30 years that scientists have figured out how smell works, it's scientifically proven that everyone smells things differently. Sight, now that takes up a large portion of the brain. But what we see and how we see it is often influenced by our fears and our stories, our perspectives. Our senses are our link to the world around us. But when we go on autopilot, there's an awful lot that goes on that we miss because we aren't paying attention. This is where the richness is found or lost. This is where you win or lose the prize. A few months ago, I was in a group coaching meeting where a woman confessed that her life was good. She wasn't having any problems, except that because things were running smoothly, she was bored, and she felt life didn't hold very much for her at the moment. Dulled and complacent, she was numb. We've probably all been there at one time or another. There is definitely a space in life where we are so used to stimulation that without chaos or something extraordinary to get our chemicals flowing, life feels dull, uncolorful, muted. This is not the only time we have proof of not using our senses. It also happens when we're moving so fast that we can't take time to notice what's going on around us. These are the moments when we are losing the now. These are the moments when we need to check in and actively get back in touch with the vividness of the colors around us with the way the air feels on our skin or the background noises we've blocked out. These are the moments that we get to take a deep breath, breathe in and notice what there is to notice or look deeply into a friend's eyes or hold someone's hand and feel a moment of gratitude because you can see, feel, hear, smell, taste, whatever is around you. When I guide outdoor adventures, I almost always stop my clients and we listen for a moment actively. 
Sometimes we hear the leaves rustling in the wind, sometimes the buzz of insects in the air, sometimes a stream, sometimes the birds or something rustling in the undergrowth. Sometimes it's cars on the road below the trail, or sometimes we hear a plane overhead. I always encourage them to reach out and touch the trees, to feel the texture of the bark. Is it papery, peeling, thick and jagged? What about running your hands across the grasses or reaching out to feel the petals of a flower, their perfect softness, or even a thorn? Breathe deep, I tell them. What do you smell? Can you smell the pine trees? And of course, please stop for a moment and look around you. See, really see the colors. There's a whole palette of greens, browns, blues, and of course, hundreds of other colors depending upon where you are. I do this exercise with them because more often than not when we hike and even when we just live our lives, we're pushing against time. We have an end result, a destination, something to check off a list, a place to be, a thing to get done. And we focus so closely on that end result or our mind is caught up in some worry that the details around us, the richness, they go unnoticed. If you've forgotten how to engage with the scenery aspect of life, then you're missing the sensual details along the way, the stuff that adds the actual depth to living. And interestingly, when you start paying attention to it, you realize how much you're ripping yourself off when you do miss it, how rich the colors are, how lovely it is to slow down enough to feel and to see and to smell and to luxuriate in your senses and the things that are around you. On a late night hike in the Tetons, moving through the moon-soaked dark, I met with a herd of bolting elk. It came out of nowhere, their chosen trail no more than 10 yards in front of me, and I couldn't see any of them. They were stampeding through the Wyoming night, their shadow shapes pounded past my eyes. I froze in amazement when I should have run. I was on the edge of fear at their closeness, but their power was a magnet. In the dark, I was only able to hear the force of their movements as they vaulted a fence that stood in their way. I felt the vibration of the ground as their hooves pummeled it. I could see the outline of their bodies in motion just barely. But most potent was their smell. The smell of raw elk, of sweat, of wild animal. It held me captive in the moment, mesmerized. And then they were gone. After they passed, I stood taking deep breaths, trying to keep that smell, the smell of that powerful fleeting experience of the wildness of elk. I stared hard through the darkness after them. The power of that moment in the Tetons was a gift to be sure. But every day we have the chance to tune in sensually and take that gift that awareness of what is in a rich and lovely moment. Not only does the present moment hold that gift, but perhaps even a cure. I have a friend, a dear friend, who has struggled desperately most of her life with manic and depressive moments. And after a lifetime of looking for answers, she found that staying present, something so simple, right? But she found that staying present right in that moment was a place that staved off the anxiety of the unknown for her. It allowed her to manage what was right in front of her. And that was the only thing that worked. So powerful. As we end today's episode, I encourage you to stop. Today, maybe right now, just so you don't forget, get very present with every sense that you have. What do you smell? What do you intuit? What textures can you feel? What colors brighten your day? When you pay attention to it, the colors always pop to me. So get very present with every sense and see what richness it brings to your day. I would love it. Please, pretty please, share this episode with a friend or a family member, a loved one, someone that you want to help remind them of just this life tool of getting present. And we'll see you in two weeks for the next episode.